I removed the battery tray from the uh, treasure chest. The rails and glides are still in there, of course. Uh, I just pulled them out for easy access uh, to the treasure chest to do some uh, inspection and I'm going to be doing some cleaning in there get rid of any sand or anything that might be in there clean that ready for um, replacement or re re that's not the right word I want to use ready to reinstall the cells I mounted and partially wired the J1772. It's just slightly off from being perfectly horizontal and that's because there were three holes in there from the original fuel port and these two bottom screws took care of those three holes. So if I were to put it level I would have had to drill a hole right next to an existing hole which anyway so slightly off and uh, I'm just gonna live with that uh, and it's on the passenger side so I don't see it all the time so it makes it easier to live with that so what I have left to do I've I've wired the um, the uh, the 220 I still have the um, pilot and proximity lines to connect uh, but to do that I need to have uh, the AVC2 installed and so I'm thinking about installing it on our existing <laughs> car's been driven on dusty gravel roads on the existing component board back there I got to see where it will fit and uh, so anyway I'll have to run the lines back uh, for that and I have to modify the safety interlock setup that we had slight modification with that so those two things we'll be doing um, here's the original charge port left it in the bumper I removed the wiring so it's no longer connected to anything. So that's uh, that's what's up today, and uh, I'll kind of let you see what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to access the from up here. I think it'd be easier to access that component board. I'll remove the little hatch cover here and go in from the top our component board updated with the AVC2 and our new safety interlock relay down here. The old one operated in a different fashion. This one is being operated by the AVC2. So our board's getting a little crowded. Uh, so those two things we just added. This we added back when we got the vehicle. Uh, we added the reverse, electronic reverse. It didn't have electronic reverse for some reason. Uh, I guess the original owner that had it converted did not want that. I don't know why you wouldn't. But anyway, we added it because I wanted it. And so this is an add-on also. In addition to adding the reverse, which is on this side of this double pull, double throw relay, we have the reverse lights operated when we use electronic reverse. And so this relay performs both functions. We cleaned the engine bay back a year and a half ago when we took possession of the vehicle. And I mean, you can see it's an open engine bay, but a year and a half of driving in gravel roads and uh, a lot of freeway driving too, but but um, surface streets and gravel roads too come into play with this vehicle. And so, yeah, it gets quite dirty. So anyway, that's uh, it for upgrades. I tested everything. Everything seems to work. 
we'll know for sure once we get the battery pack in and um, can do the ultimate test with uh, with the charger make sure it uh, is charging our battery pack but this is one thing I wanted to mention in all of this and that is when you make any modifications to your conversion be sure and update your schematics your notes so forth so we update you know when we add something when we did it what we did and update the uh, schematic diagram to show the changes additions or whatever I thought we'd walk through the schematic of what we were doing. We've told you what we're doing. We've kind of showed you some of the components used and so forth. We showed you the AVC2 and our safety interlock relay installed. So let's let's talk about kind of that bigger picture and the um, the wiring involved. So what we did is we we've added the AVC2. The original, uh, you know, 110 volt setup, you have a, a ground, a hot, and a neutral. And so, when going to the AVC2, what you have, um, the AVC2, going to the J1772, I'm getting old, I glitch every once in a while. I know what I'm talking about, believe it or not, but uh, the brain and the mouth don't always seem to be on the same same wavelength. Anyway, I noticed in our previous video, I, we were talking about batteries, I said they were within a thousandth of a volt. I meant one hundredth of a volt of one another. And caught it, didn't edit it right away, and so it was in the final, <laughs> final video. My apologies there. Anyway, I try to catch these things. The J1772 has been installed, replacing that original Marinco 110 volt charge port. So with the ABC2, we have uh, five pins, three that are larger and two small ones. And we've got lots of videos where we cover these things. So anyway, you have line one, line two, ground, pilot, and proximity. Okay. Well, line one connects where the hot did before. Line two is the neutral. The ground's the ground. Now, so we've added that, and that's the connections to the, the charger. We've also added the AVC2. The AVC2 allows our J1772 charge port to be able to communicate with the AVC. Oh, gosh. The EVSE. Boy, I'm just... Okay, the uh, EVSE charge station, whatever name, the technical names, EVS, EVSE, Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. That's what's on the wall or what you plug into the wall. And basically there's uh, a contactor or contactors in there. And so when you grab that that cable, there's no power at the end of that cable. You plug it in and it communicates with the vehicle. In this case, it's communicating with our AVC2 and that tells it to close those contactors and to supply power uh, to our charge port and to our charger. Okay, So the AVC2 is, or something like it, is necessary to work in conjunction with the J1772 so that we can charge that method and you know publicly charged and so forth. So the AVC2 has uh, several connections here and uh, you've got the pilot proximity which are going to go to our J1772. You've got ground and chassis basically one and the same. Um, we just connect those two together and go to ground. Um, and you've got an unswitched 12 volts. We want this on all the time so that we can plug this in on any time whether the ignition's on or not, plug this in, it can charge. So, and we have a one amp fuse. 
and then there's a built-in relay. This is a very small relay in this, and that's why we don't run our, our safety interlock directly through that relay, just because it's very small and fragile. And so we use a regular automotive relay, and we're going to use this built-in relay to the ABC2 to control that relay. So what we're doing is we're taking switch 12 volts. So we basically, if you look at the doka, we, we came off the fuse block and we go into the common on the AVC2, come up the normally open, which is going over here to the coil on our safety interlock relay. So pretty simple, right? Understand it. So we have a KSI circuit and our KSI circuit has a series of safety features that are in series with one another, such as our low voltage cutout, our inertia switch, um, safety interlock, so forth. So we have the KSI circuit that's going to come into the common on our safety interlock relay, and it's going to come out through the normally closed, and then that goes to the KSI relay. So in the bigger picture, what happens is when we plug our, our um, AV, EVSE into the J1772, it's sensed by the AVC2, which then um, closes this relay. So when it closes the relay, we now have nothing going there unless you turn on the ignition, okay? So if you were to try to, and that's the whole purpose of the safety interlock. I kind of got ahead of myself, didn't I? Try to, you know, grab some time to do these videos and I end up, anyway. <laughs> got ahead of my, the purpose of the safety interlock is to prevent the car from being moved while it's, you know, being driven while it's plugged in. So if you were to have the vehicle plugged in, and you turn on the ignition to move the car. As soon as you turn on the ignition, we now have 12 volts supplied here. And that 12 volts is going to energize the safety interlock. And the safety interlock uh, relay will close. And so the normally closed will open. And so when that opens, we're not going to have power going to our KS KSI relay which means the KSI relay won't be energized, which means the car's not going to go anywhere. So this is the standard automotive relay showing the bottom of it in your trails. Here's in schematic form. You can see that uh, the normally open from our relay on the AVC2 is coming into the coil. The other side goes to ground. Uh, the common is coming from our KSI relay. Goes through the normally closed to the KSI relay. As soon as this is energized, that closes, this opens up, and you're a no-go. Now, one of the things that we have done at times, and we do them all differently, this is not the way I normally do these. It's the way I did it on this one. Because it was just, I mentioned it in the last video, path of least resistance. I had an opening on my... KSI. And all right, I guess. Gosh. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this is just an entire video of bloopers, I guess. Uh, you have to change the title on the video. I had an opening on the fuse block. Normally what we do is we come from uh, an unswitched 12 volts to the common. And and I could, it was just easier to just plug into the fuse. The downside to do it this way. If this fuse blows out, there's still a possibility that I could drive away, <laughs> take the cord with me, okay? Um, but, eh, you know, anything's possible. I mean, look how many times I've glitched just in this one video. <laughs> so anyway, that's why, you know, normally the way we do for customers' vehicles, the way I recommend that you do it is you go from an unswitched source to the common and through. I show it this way because this is the way I actually did it on this one. And I just did it because of proximity things, not adding too many more wires and so forth. It was just 
This was just easy for me to do in this instance on my own personal vehicle. Um, but yeah, there is a drawback to doing this. Um, so normally when we do this, it would be like this. So the ABC2 is fused, but no fuse going to the common and going to that relay. So anyway, just uh, in addition to what we, you know, have shown in the last video and this video about, you know, you saw the, the J1772 installed. We showed the ABC2 and the safety interlock relay installed. But that's just the surface. That was just a part of the picture. So I thought I'd take you a little deeper. And that's what we plan on doing this year is uh, we've always kept our YouTube videos somewhat surface uh, information. We're going to get a little bit deeper this time um, for people because we kind of feel that's what people are wanting. So anyway, this is what I've done on the, on the DOCA. And so in our next video, we will have finished, uh, still bottom balancing the cells right now. In the next video, we will be reinstalling the cells, um, connecting the, uh, the interconnects, connecting the cells, um, as well as uh, plugging it in, see if it charges, see if all this works. And so uh, this is going to allow me to charge much faster than we did before, allow me to charge um, at public charging, so forth. Not that we've ever really had a need for it with this vehicle. It's a shop track stuff, but there are times when I've thought about perhaps using it for a little longer runs, which it's nice because it's electric and I like driving it. Um, it's less of a pain in the butt than getting the old Dodge diesel out. But uh, on longer runs, uh, the DOCA just isn't a high-speed vehicle. It's about 60, 5, 70 is pretty much the top end. You go beyond that, it's really burning the electrons. It's not very aerodynamic. It's 4,000 pounds. It's just not uh, an economy vehicle as far as uh, an electric one goes. And so it's great for, um, you know, local stuff. And uh, once in a while, we'll, we'll run, you know, a 40-mile, 50-mile round trip loop. But um, if I were to go further and then want the charge and that kind of thing uh, beyond the range of the pack, the public charge is just not going to come into play. Because on a longer trip like that, uh, up here it's all on the interstate. Everybody else is running, you know, I'm running 65, 70. Everybody else is running 75 to 85. And so uh, in those cases, I, I would prefer to take the Dodge anyway. Um, the downside of the Dodge is that's not where it runs very economically either. Um, it's, it's built for towing. And in previous videos, you've seen me standing next to the, the big fifth wheel that we uh, towed all over the western United States. Um, and this truck is great for towing trailers such as this one, uh, the fifth wheel, so forth. Um, but it's geared low. And so at 70, it's doing... I think about 2100 RPMs at 70, which is, you know, I mean, red line's over 3,000 on it, but the basically normal driving, you, you don't go over 2,000 going through the gears or anything. I mean, it's got all that low end torque and it cruises the best at pretty much the same speeds that the Doka does. The difference is you get going fast on the Doka, you're going to need to be plugging in soon because it really starts consuming. Where the Dodge, it's got a 35 gallon fuel tank. You just just rock on. If I want to cruise 75 or 80, it, it'll do it. Um, but again, it's tacking up at that point. So they're both work trucks. That's the bottom line. And so um, on a longer trip like that, if I don't, the truck isn't required, I can take the e-golf and uh, put the seats down and put a lot in that. 
and it it's a very efficient driving car and has a much higher range. So that's kind of you know the the picture on these EV conversions, uh, especially historically, uh, they were to fill the that that niche where the average American in 2017 drove 31 miles a day, and so you know all of our vehicles from the very beginning all had you know at least a 40 mile range, most of them in that 60 mile range, and uh, and that's where we stay today. We're basically uh, they all have an 60 at the very lowest, but but 80 to 100 miles. That's where we live most of the time. That keeps the cars light and agile, um, keeps your costs down, and that's where the majority of the people live. On any given day, less than 7% of the people drive 100 miles or more. And so, you know, your, your situation may be different, but that's the reality, okay? So numerically, that's where the bulk of the the requirement and need is, and that's what we build for, and that's what I use. I've, you know, the Carmen Ghia was a 60 mile range car, the Bugs a 60 mile range car, um, my E Golf EPA rating 83 miles, and I've never had an issue uh, with range. The Doka is a 60 mile range. It's not an issue, you know, because I just don't drive that far on a daily basis. When we need to travel further or need to pull heavy loads or carry heavy loads, I've got a Dodge Turbo Diesel that can do it without even, <laughs> without even grunting. And so um, that's kind of the, the, the bigger picture. And so hope that you got something out of this. Um, I know I'm not young, attractive, and entertaining. Um, I misspeak a lot. I can't, I can't, even, can't even call things by the right names. But I do appreciate you watching. And like I said, in 2023, which this is uh, Happy New Year, by the way. This is January 1st, uh, 2023. And uh, we're wanting to uh, build our subscriber base up to uh, uh, we'd like to get beyond 100,000. Uh, not for any particular reason other than I like to have a goal. And so this is going to be a goal. We've been doing YouTube videos, I think, since 2010. We started the business in 2008. I think we started YouTubing in 2010 after we restored the bug. So the bug was came out of the paint shop January of 2010. And we had this nice, shiny marketing vehicle, and that's kind of when we started doing the the YouTube thing, and uh, it all started from that. So anyway, that's one of our objectives for 2023, is build up that subscriber base. And that's mainly, uh, now that I think about it, it, it comes up because, oh, about once or twice a year, I'll look at the analytics, uh, just because I'm a kind of a numbers, kind of bottom line, kind of, you know, where's the rubber meet the road kind of thing. and it's interesting that most of our viewers, most of the people that view these videos, most of the people that will view this video are not subscribers. And so, and that's, you know, week in, week out. And so, uh, I, you know, you're watching the video anyway, why not become a subscriber? Um, it, no skin off your nose. And uh, it makes uh, what we do here maybe have a return because at this point all these videos we've put out basically the only return on investment we get is that hopefully you're building a safe simple reliable and affordable conversion okay so we're hoping to get uh, a little something in return uh, just to show us that what we've been doing all these years has been appreciated so like Subscribe, leave a comment if you like, and um, kind of show us some love. <laughs> Let us know that, uh, you know, the old guy in the warehouse is not wasting his time staring at this camera, which is not my favorite thing to do, by the way. 
So anyway, see you next week with the uh, conclusion of this uh, uh, project on the Volkswagen Transporter Doka. See you then.